What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and in this episode I'm going to be sharing with you some advanced techniques inside of Adobe XD. Some things you may not have known, may not be doing, and when I show them to you, you might pee in your pants a little bit. All right, Adobe XD is open on my screen and I have my design file up and running. It's an e-commerce experience for shoes that I designed. And if you want access to this file so you can follow along with me, then make sure that you check the link down in the description to become one of my members. Members get access to not only all digital files that I work on, but you also get exclusive content behind the scenes as well as live Q&As, live streams, and Ask Me Anything. So check the link down in the description for that. All right, the first advanced technique we wanna talk about is using libraries to streamline your workflow because of that amazing integration that Adobe XD has with the rest of the Adobe Creative Cloud. So if you have the Creative Cloud, you're gonna to wanna to start using libraries. To access your libraries in XD, you go up to File and drop down to Open CC Libraries, or you can press Command or Control Shift L, which I'm gonna do right now, and it opens up my library off screen. Now, this is a library that I have created and prepared for this actual design project that I'm working on. What's amazing about Adobe CC libraries and the integration that it offers is that it's available everywhere. So I have my libraries open inside of XD, but if I come up and open up my Adobe CC, actually Creative Cloud application in my menu bar up there, we're gonna see that I have Usually you'd launch over here onto your apps, but if I head over to my work in the top left-hand corner, I now have all of those elements in my library available to me. So if I wanted to take this red shoe, I could click on it. I can add new things, change the name, duplicate them, delete them, or I can also edit them. And it's gonna open up the program, the Adobe program that I created this asset in. For me, that was inside of Adobe Photoshop. So if I wanted to come and let's say add a hue and saturation layer, and then change the hue to be a little bit more of like a purple and pink type shoe. And there you have it, it's updated by itself inside of the design file. Ah, that's just absolutely amazing. Now everything is in sync everywhere and that's a really advanced thing. All right, next advanced technique you need to know about is fixed elements when you're scrolling down a page. It doesn't seem like a very advanced technique, but it makes all the difference when you're doing work. If we zoom into our list screen over here, we have a bunch of shoes that are listed down the page. And when I preview this, it's not scrollable right now. That's because my canvas itself is not actually a longer size. So if I wanted to do that, I can bring the size of my canvas down. Now all of a sudden this is scrollable. But the problem that I'm having is that my navigation is scrolling with it and we don't want that. So first things first, we're gonna take our, um, our shoe list here. We're gonna press Command R and create a repeat grid. But we're still having that problem, right? That navigation isn't moving. It's so simple, but it makes such a big difference. I'm gonna click on the element in question. I'm gonna head up to my inspector panel and hit fixed position when scrolling. Now when I scroll my screen, everything scrolls underneath that navigation and my navigation is staying fixed at the very bottom of the screen, which is exactly what we want. All right, next advanced technique is nested components. Components are so huge and when you nest them, they become even better. So you gotta learn this, know this, and use this and everything because it's a massive time saver. If I come into my design, you can see when I click on my layers and my layers panel, inside of my footer, we have some elements. So here's the cleats. So we have these four icons. Each one of these really should be a component. So let's press Command K, Command K, Command K, and Command K. Now if we go to our components tab, we can see we have each of those in our components tab and they're usable. We could drag out instances of those components. That would be really, really great. What makes this even better is when we take those components, we put them inside of another element like our footer, we press Command K there and we create a new footer. So now when I go to my components, I can drag out a new instance of my footer. What's really cool about this is if later on I wanna tweak any of my nested components, like for instance, this little icon of the person, I can right click on it, make sure I'm editing the actual master component and I can go ahead and make my changes. For instance, let's say I wanna take the little hair out of it. It has changed the component itself and also where that component is nested and that is absolutely mind blowing. Can we just, can we talk about how that's mind blowing? Combined components save you tons of time, they speed up your workflow, and they just start to build out that very basic foundation of a design system or pattern library. Let's talk about prototyping and specifically advanced prototyping. Adobe XD introduced auto animate and that changed the game. It 
open up a world of possibilities for all of us as designers to prototype things with motion and to make it really, really simple. While tapping and then auto animating something is great, there are more interaction types out there than just tap. For instance, if I hit category and press play, we have a tap trigger right here, which opens up our next screen, animating these elements from screen to screen. And that's super duper nice. If I click on shoot two and open up my prototype, I can not only tap, but I can drag portions here and get animations and interactions off of a drag type trigger. And so I wanna cover just a few of the basics here um, that it's really gonna change your game if you're not using these trigger types. The first one we've already mentioned here, and that's the drag trigger, being able to drag things back and forth. What's great about this is it's fluid. If I drag slow, I'm seeing the animation happen slowly in real time. My navigation bar there is animating and uh, everything is just moving seamlessly. How did we do that? My drag interaction was triggered from the shoe. So if I select the shoe, you can see we have an interaction or, or prototype happening from this screen to that screen. And in my interaction panel, you can see I've selected drag trigger and I've selected auto animate the destination and I'm easing in and easing out. So you can see in my artboards, not only is my blue shoe on this canvas, but the red shoe is the, with the opacity down off canvas so that we get the transition between the two. This is a really, really simple way to create these drag triggers. Let's talk about another advanced trigger and see if we can do something similar, um, not using a drag trigger, but maybe instead using a key and gamepad trigger. So we're gonna hit key and gamepad here, and we're gonna press N for next on our keyboard, and it dropped that right in there, and it's gonna animate from screen to screen. So let's go ahead and press play and press the N key and it does that animation for us just like that. We don't have a, a game or keypad trigger set um, to go back, but as soon as we get back to that previous screen, N's gonna work for us. This is really, really great. You can watch one of my other videos on creating an Xbox video game console kind of interface and I actually attached my Xbox controller via Bluetooth to my computer and was able to work things back and forth using the game controller, which was super fun um, and really brings a lot of high resolution prototyping to your design. Let's really quickly experiment with voice as well because that's another one that Adobe XD has brought in that's super duper advanced. So instead of uh, being game and keypad, let's do voice. We wanna enter the voice command here. How about uh, next shoe, something like that. So we've selected voice and our command that we're gonna speak is next shoe. So I'm gonna select my prototype and bring it up. I'm gonna hold down the space bar, say the command and release the command and see if the voice command works. So let's try saying the correct command, which is next shoe, next shoe. And it swipes for us. That's really, really nice. What happens if we say the incorrect command? Let's try um, my name is Jesse and see if that works. My name is Jesse. No match for my name is Jesse. Oh, voice commands in the house. That's really exciting. All right, the last advanced feature I wanna talk about is sharing. Adobe XD gives you tons of features for sharing your work to stakeholders and clients and people that need to see and comment and interact with your work. And so I'm liking my project as it is. So I'm gonna head over to the share tab and there's a bunch of different options. Let's cover them. You can see that now we've hit the share tab. We have the ability to create new share links. I'm gonna drop down and I'm gonna create a new link and the link's gonna appear there once I finish creating. I'm gonna title it Shoe E-Commerce and I'm gonna select what type of link I wanna create here. How do I wanna share this? for design review, which is gonna get me feedback on the design or prototype, development, where it creates a development environment, um, presentation, which is more optimized for an experience of presenting and kind of just seeing and viewing and experiencing your design, user testing or custom. What this is gonna do is basically create a set of permissions and features that are available to me. So let's start with design review. Let's create the link and Adobe XD is gonna create that link for me. And as, as soon as it's done, it's gonna present that link in the top right hand corner here and we'll be able to click on it. All right, now that we have our link created, let's click on it and open up our browser and we'll be able to see a design review version of the work that we've done. We can go back and forth in our prototype. We can skip to different screens in case we want to check things out. We can leave comments. We can place a pin somewhere and say, you know, something like, I like that and submit it. We can mention different people that are included on our file and that feels pretty good. But what happens if we create a new link and we wanna make this one more of a development environment, let's go ahead and create that link now. 
Okay, Adobe XD has created our dev environment um, and we wanna click on that link and see how it's different from the previous link. So let's check that out. Now we have the same stuff. We can preview it, we can play with the prototype, but we can also head over to our spec mode. In spec mode, we can click on items, we can get all the details. So it's gonna give us measurements from the element or to all the surrounding elements. It's gonna give us all the categories, the styles, the appearance, and the content. We can click on any element, for instance, this asset, the shoe, and we can download that as a PNG or a PDF. All of our colors are available to us and where those colors are used. All of our font styles are available to us. All of our assets for download and all of the interactions have been listed. This is a great way to hand off and work with developers in that design and developer handoff. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I do lots of videos about design and development and Adobe XD, so maybe stick around. If you're interested in getting your hands on the Adobe XD file that I used in this video, then consider becoming a member. So you'll get access to this file, other files, as well as live streams, Q and A's, ask me anything, extra content and behind the scenes stuff. Check the link down in the description for that. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and I hope you're having an amazing week designing amazing things, making amazing things and using some of those advanced techniques. I'll see you in the next one.